we took you to Acts, the 16th chapter. I wanted to get away from it, but here we are back at it. Acts 16 chapter and, and that verse 18, particularly we want to read and, and conclude this matter. Um, I prayed this morning. And the scripture reads in New King James, I think it's a come on the screen, but I have it in King James. Somehow my devices were not sinking. And it says, and this did she many days, Acts uh, 1 and 16. This did, did she many days, but Paul being grieved, uh, annoyed by her, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus to come out of her. And he came out that same hour. I want to continue, I guess, with part two would be the lesson of, I'm coming out of this part two. It, so if you're buying the tape, it'll be part two. I'm coming out of this 2.0 part two. Let me explain. Uh, I'm glad someone asked me, um, what does 2.0 mean? Um, it was explained to me by millennials, it's like 1.0, 2.0, 3.0. It just goes in levels. So 2.0 is next level or greater. 2.0 is next level or greater. Because I preached the message, I'm coming out of this, so I didn't want to get confused with other lessons, so I brought this one to 2.0. So if you want to write 3.0 this morning, you can do 3.0. Because we're going to another level in the deliverance of this, of this girl. Deliverance. Deliverance had to come to this young lady, this young girl that was following Paul and his disciples or the friends that were with him. She was crying out that they were men of the most high God and she had that right, but they didn't want her to become their publicity of the testimony that they were the men of the most high God. But I wanted you to see with me in verse 18, she did this many days. Can you imagine being caught in a routine of dysfunctional cycle for many days. I'm in a game I can't get out of because I allowed the spirit of divination or the python spirit of fortune telling to overtake me. Um, I'm gonna say this and, and, and um, don't judge me. I'm not gonna say it. So. <laughs> We often see people, I'm gonna say it like this, we often see people that we think have habits, or they may have a habit, are caught up in something, um, a chain of events. And you look, how can, they should be bigger than that, stronger than that. But if not careful, all of us can get caught up in a routine of something that's not good for us. Mm -hmm. You didn't stop passing fast food restaurants until you realize your doctor said, that stuff gonna kill you. Now, all of it's not bad, but some things you just can't keep eating and gorging on constantly. Until you start thinking about what I'm putting in my body is gonna determine what's coming out of my body. So habits, you talk about a person that has certain habits, but what about the habits you have? Notice that as <clears throat> soon as somebody starts talking about somebody, you got to weigh in. Girl, that's what I thought. Let me tell you what I heard. You're just getting all your comments. It's like, then you, you stop and think, why am I caught up in this negative conversation about somebody that don't even care because I happen to be a person that always wants to be? Always want to get caught up in other people's business habits. This girl was in a cycle of an event, a dysfunctional game, playing over and over and over and over. Verse 19, I'm not going to go there, but I'm going to just talk a little bit about it in this 16th chapter of, of Acts. He says, she brought her masters much gain, gain or increase or profit, and they knew that the hope of her, their profit was gone when Paul told the spirit to come out of that girl. She was being used by men or people that was controlling her. And the spirit of divination they were using through her to tell fortunes. But they saw when Paul spoke in the name of Jesus, come out. Help me in this room to settle some atmosphere. Just say, in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus I, command you, I command you, come out. Come out. 
It's powerful when you have that language inside of you that you can walk into the bedroom with unruly children or on your job where things have gone crazy or even in your own mind where things are getting disturbed and say, in the name of Jesus, I command you, come out. This girl was possessed. We become again oppressed by spirits that want to come and set on us or try to control us. Because we're believers and we're filled with the Holy Spirit, again, we cannot be possessed, but we can be oppressed. And spirit of oppression is real. Spirit of depression is real. Spirit of no oppression is real also. You can find yourself becoming overwhelmed and don't know why you're in that state. And if you don't get up too soon and do something about it, it'll start taking you under. All week long, you just weigh down. And then you come to church. And this praise team better do what they're supposed to do. Uh, sing this thing up off me. And get me back in my happy place. I got to have some joy. <clears throat> the joy of the Lord is your strength. It's in you. And the world didn't give it. And the world can't take it away. This girl wanted to be free from the control of the spirit of divination and the spirit of Python. The spirit of Python is a fortune telling, soothsayer, witchcraft. She wanted to be free from it. Last week I talked to you about careful about what you go around, who you go around, how you hang around, what's in your space. Everybody coming in your house should not be known, but they should know you've been anointed. You come in these doors. You can get some oil on you. I'll tell you that. I'm leaving it on the door now. I'm leaving it down in the city. It's going to be some oil somewhere. You're not going to walk in my house and say hello. That's why a lot of you all have a, 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 a personality of the, of the Asian uh, people, I think it is, that, or even the Hindus. People come to your house. You tell them to take your shoes off. Everybody got to take their shoes off but mama. You can tell the mama to take her shoes off, please. I'm the one who gave you shoes. I ain't taking my shoes off. I'm walking right in this house again. Everything about me is holding. I ain't taking my shoes off. And maybe dad. The spirit of the python is a fortune telling. It is, watch it again, a rebellious spirit. It is a stargazing horoscope. We talked about that. Enchanters. Hypnotists. Drugs. Magic. Just watching this movie, and it's a magic movie. I'm just watching it. I'm just watching it on TV. I'm just watching it. Wow. Woo. Houdini. Woo. Woo. Mm, wow. Hey, woo, where did it go? Before I know it, the TV is sending me a message. And I'm not being hypnotized, but as a spirit working through this medium. And about 3 o'clock in the morning when I go to bed, I wake up and say, something wrong. No, how long did you watch TV? What was the last thing you watched? What did you turn on? What did you turn off? Because what you see, perception, has an entrance into you. If the eyes are the mirror to the soul, then what you see has access to get in if you're not careful. Don't worry. It's going to get better. In Micah, in your Bible, stay, stay in Acts. I'm just going to jump into a few scriptures. I'll come right back. Micah 5 and 12, he says, the Lord says, I will cut off or I will destroy sorcerers, witchcrafts from their hands, and they shall have no smooth sayers. God is revealing to his people that I'm going to do some cleaning up. I'm going to cut off some of these things from my people so you can be ready to receive what I want you to have. But I gotta remove some things so I can bless you with greater things. It's called pruning, preparing for greater roses. I'm often amazed at my garden when he comes by this time of the year, gets ready for spring to come and right outside of one of our windows we have rose bushes there. And he cuts these rose bushes back to the point that's like, I think you killed him. He says, no, I cut it right back enough so it can grow back. And it happens every year. They grow back more luscious and more beautiful. But do you think you feel it sometimes when God snips? And feel like he cut too close? But y'all, you can cut off all them, but don't cut off him. Don't cut this one off, Lord. Lord, just say, I'll work with it. 
I got some answers. Y'all gonna be deep this morning. That's okay. We hold on, oh Lord, don't cut this. I got this. This girl needed a change. And finally the day came. Her life was shifted from bondage to freedom. Can you imagine how she felt for the rest of her life? Walking by those who had her, them, her under their control, and she tells them, you don't control me anymore. God has come in and freed me. Freed me from magic, sorcery, and idolatry, Ouija boards, games, cartoons, SpongeBob's. Any rebellion that was in me, God has freed me from it. This is the day of a 3.0, another level of deliverance and freedom. Years that have been lost, spinless, aimlessly trying to get ahead, but couldn't get there. Life was in a cycle, but now we're about to come out that cycle. Note the text in, 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 in Acts 16 and verse 18. She followed Paul there many days. She was a bully. Oh, the spirit was a bully. A spirit can bully you so, so many days you'll just get worn out. By a spirit of a bully. Spirit of bullying gets sometimes into children and they bully their parents. Oh, to think you would have talked to my dad like that. Oh, You can almost still taste the blood. <laughs> Watch this. Let me let y'all millennials and Gen Z's catch it with me. How many remember backhand? <laughs> it would be so quick. It would be like our hands was right here. And they never moved. You would bet somebody else hit you. Because they'd be so cool. And the worst backhands is Sunday morning. Sitting in service. I don't want the saints to think I'm evil or mean. But I promise you, I will take this meat right here off your body and you will get it when you get back to the car. Sit down, you better not move. You better not raise up, you better not move. You better, uh, uh, don't you dare. Don't you even act like, say them to me, don't, 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 don't you let them, water, don't let them tears come out your eyes. You better not embarrass me. I, well, could you turn it down somehow? You better not embarrass me. I wish sometimes I grew up in my other ethnic friend's house. When they told me, I said, what happened to you? Well, my mom gave me time out for two days. Time what? No, my dad knocked me out for a day. <laughs> and I'm just coming back. I'm sorry, I know we have a diverse church, so you that had time out, God bless you. You that got knocked out, amen. Spirit of divination, this girl needs to be delivered from the spirit of the python. It's a spirit that would smother and suffocate. Controlling her. If you don't bring the spirit of that spirit of divination under control, it would destroy your life. Controlling this girl, annoying Paul them, bullying them. They were no match for her, or that spirit, I'm sorry, but God was a match for her. Children think the parents are not a match for them, but God is. He can break the spirit of control out of their lives and the spirit of rebellion. I want to land in there before I finish. It was a spirit of rebellion that's rampant today. Some call it anarchy. I do what I want to do. 
and with such intensity that anything that comes around you, you try to make sure it is subject to you. That you want to control it. You want to dominate. And the church is a good place, not giving it an open door, but it's a place where people can come in and try to flex themselves because we are people of love and respect and order. We do not want to hurt anyone. We want to make sure that, that everyone's okay. But the Bible says, watch and pray. And you'll get that when you get home, when you get your, 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 anyway, your license. Um, um, <laughs> watch and pray means that Jesus had 12 disciples, right? And one of them had a sword. Y'all working hard this morning like me. If Jesus was the son of God and he had all power and demons were backing up for him, then why was the guy carrying a sword? Because Jesus says you got to watch and pray. <laughs> Spirit of rebellion. Rebellion is, is something. Rebellion. Let me see what you this. First Samuel's 15 chapter and verse 23. The spirit of divination over the girl. Okay. I'm coming out of this 2.0. Next level. Spirit of rebellion. First Samuel's 15 and 23. Now he's talking to Saul here. He says, rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft or divination. And stubbornness or arrogance is as iniquity or evil and adultery. You think just because you are pulling away from everybody, I'm telling my mama told me don't bag up on nobody. Well, yes, protect yourself, but is that a spirit of protection or a spirit of rebellion? Because you're fighting everything and everybody. You're mad no matter what. Nobody can satisfy or please you. And rebellious people have a tendency to get around other rebellious people. And have one big rebellion. <laughs> Stubbornness. How do you see stubbornness, Pastor Elsa said? Sometimes it's just the simplest thing of, and I know this is not just cliche, we don't do a, a, it's not a filler. Sometimes it's just a, a, a checking the setting of, the, of where you're at, you know. Um, how many have gone to a, a sports arena game? Sports arena game, any game? How many remember the wave? Okay, it was beautiful to see it but it's also awkward to see a row sitting down when the wave goes. So the commentators are like, this is just, just the wave, so let's do it again. The wave, ooh, everybody does the wave. But still, others are so disconnected that I ain't moving nothing. Well, I ain't coming to no wave. I paid $75 for this ticket. I'm sitting right here. Matter of fact, y'all sit down. I can't see you on the front row. What you mean you can't see? Sometimes it's just that stubbornness Okay, nobody's in here stubborn. I know that we've already, we already, we already gone through this. We already, everybody is so amenable to the Lord. Your, so, your heart is so open to Jesus that you're just ready for him. Just move however he wants to move. Jesus, have your way. Whatever you say, we just want to be pleasing to you. Turn to your neighbor and say good morning. I promise you, I'm looking at people right now that didn't move. Like, what did he say? I ain't doing that. I ain't, I, I ain't talked to this person I've been in church. I ain't got time to do all that. You know, please, I, he talking. I ain't got time to talk to nobody else. Sometimes just, just to see if you lose, if, if you're free, or are you just... <sighs> Stubbornness is a part of this rebellion. Come on, Clinton, you're talking about... Saul, he told him, this is the word of the Lord to you. Since you rejected me, I'm going to reject you. I told you when you go down there and fight that battle, don't bring nothing back. Kill everything, throw everything away. Don't keep nothing. Saul told Samuel, well, the people wanted these things. Just because they, I, they wouldn't bother me, so I figured they could just keep it. No, I told you. Don't bring anything back. Nothing. Burn it all up. I got more for you. But that spirit was on him a rebellion he could not get away from. He rebelled against the things of God and God said, I'm going to reject you. Hmm. Rebellion is a strong thing. It is like the spirit of divination. 
where the Lord says that we can break that thing if we yield to God. Because Paul looked at the spirit that was on this girl, in this girl, in Acts 16 and verse 18, he said, I command you in the name of Jesus, come out of her. Our church is moving to a level of commanding in the name of Jesus, a move of God. And when the church begins to echo the same, demons have to flee and find somewhere to go. And the Bible says they look for places that are dry with no spirit inside and they take up a boat with them. They have left one way and come back with seven others even greater because you didn't allow yourself to be filled and meanable to the Holy Spirit. Some of you are in a good place, but you're in a very tough place. Because once you come into the house of the Lord, you serve the enemy, notice that I'm leaving your camp. I'm not just sitting up in a religious formation this morning, I'm in church, amen, glory, hallelujah. No, no, you are now sitting on the winning side. The devil knows you in church. He knows you online. He knows that you decided to put Jesus in your life. He's mad at you. But he cannot defeat you because out of your mouth, you can say, in the name of Jesus, come out. Oh, God. Jesus wants to use you, and he wants to use me to set forth his charge in the church. But we must move away from things that have inhabited us and hindered us from moving in the power and authority of God. I say this morning, Lord Jesus, forgive me. Forgive my sins and accept me as your child. Accept me, I accept you as my personal savior. And you promised that you would save me. I want you to instruct my life. I want to walk in and follow your word in the name of Jesus, be Lord of my life. This girl is not noted that she prayed for deliverance, but Paul knew she needed deliverance and he had the words to change her life. But if you pray the prayer, just say, Lord Jesus, save me. And if you're saved, say, Lord Jesus, I'm glad I'm saved. I thank you for saving me. I thank you for being Lord in my life and ruler over all darkness. If you're saved and you have the Holy Spirit in your life, you're in a good position. If you're not saved, you should get saved this morning. Because the devil you're fighting, he ain't Mike Tyson. This devil trying to take your complete life. He comes to kill, to steal, and destroy. Your neighbor don't know, but I'm going to tell it. The reason you're still sitting here, because God blocked it. He would not allow the devil but to go so far. Come on with your cute self. You know if it not been for the Lord, <laughs> that devil would have wore you out. You ought to give God a two-second thank you praise for not letting the enemy have his way with me. Yeah. Point is, I'm glad I'm saved. I'd probably be locked up by now. If I wasn't, I'd probably somewhere still doing crime for the time for the crime. But I'm saved. Saved. Lord, let your word stay in me, and I thank you for saving me from all my sins, past, present, and future. Say, now I'm a child of God, according to the word of God, according to Matthew 18, 18. I'm abiding this strong man and spirit of divination and loose the power of the Holy Spirit in my life. Isn't it awesome that you can sit right where you're at right now while I'm talking 
I say, I bind that spirit of laziness and, and, and I, I, I come to do my thing this morning. I come to give God my all. So that spirit of distraction, uh, is he done yet? No, no. I'm waiting for a word to set me on, on fire again. I'm, I'm waiting for God to do a new thing. I, I can't leave here the way I came. You, you go to church and go home, all right, but I need a new level 2.3 before I get up out because the demons that are trying to take my life. You ain't got time to play with no kindergarten church. I need God to take me higher. So I, through the Holy Spirit, I loose the Holy Spirit in my life. I come in the name of Jesus and I thank you, God, for your word. Holy Spirit, take control. Answer every problem that's concerning me. You gave me the ability and the power to press forward even this morning. But I came in the name of the Lord. Every cold and lukewarm spirit, Laodicean spirit, I bind it in the name of Jesus. And I release the love and life of Christ in this house. The pressures of Satan will not overthrow the church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Spirit of divination, I bind you in the name of Jesus. Father, and as well as I bind, according to Matthew 18 and 18, Ah, oh God, I bind, I bind, and I loose up on earth everything that needs to be loose, everything concerning me that's going to better my life, I loose it in the name of Jesus. I bring forth the loosing, I bring, I'm sorry, I bring forth the binding of the enemy on every hand. You told me whatever I bind on earth, you bind in heaven. So I bind suicide. I bind doubt. I bind fear. I bind the spirit of control. I bind the spirit of lack, spirit of confusion. I bind it in the name of Jesus. I block it off my children's 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 children. I stop it at the door. I send it back to the pit of hell that it come from. Father, I thank you for the freedom to worship you, the freedom to go forth. I loose in the name of Jesus, the spirit of the living God, run rapid through this house. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Give back to me the years of the tanker worm. I loose in the name of Jesus your power and authority over every power of the adversary. Spirit of the living God, take free course in this church. Move down every row, every aisle. Touch every vessel. Touch every empty vessel. Let every heart sing with glory to God. Let every mind be transformed by the renewing of their mind. Let your glory fill this house. Fill this room. Run over till we can't take it no more. Get the Jesus, move, 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 Holy Spirit, have your way, have your way, have your way, have your way. Get out of the 